Brian, uh, we know that there is this crisis in cosmology. A number of the key issues, like the Hubble constant, has been under threat because the, uh, there are measurements uh, that from different technologies that exceed the error bar. So uh, there may be some fundamental physics. Others challenge that. As an experimentalist, what are the fundamental um, uh, crisis in, in cosmology today, and, and how do you analyze each? Yeah, well, they say never let a good crisis go to waste. <laughs> so we experimentalists exploit that. Uh, the more crises, the better, yeah, sure. uh, because it pokes at the holes and the, and the gaps in our understanding of the pre-existing paradigm. So for me, it's exciting when we see these discrepancies. And by the way, the discrepancies are not that discrepant. Right. <laughs> We're talking about uh, two different results, which alone have error bars or uncertainty levels that are at the sub percent or perhaps 1% level. So that's like me looking at you and guessing your age yeah. within, you know, a half a year, okay. you know, a couple of months or right. whatever, right? It's pretty, pretty impressive if you're at the carnival. Um, in some cases, much, much better. We, we know certain aspects of the age of the universe when the microwave background was formed. We know those exquisitely well. The question is, can we use the same physical models that work in the extremely early and therefore extremely simple universe, can we use those to forecast what the universe should look like, quote unquote, today? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not exactly today, but a billion years ago, two billion years ago. And when we do that, we get a result at the extremely early end that's very, very precise at the percent level, and a result that's extremely precise at the late level, a billion years ago, 13 billion years after the first measurements that we did. And they're in, in tension. Those two error bars do not overlap. And they don't overlap because the precision at which each one is measured by experimentalists, by observers, is so exquisite. So the, the tension is, is one of how do you resolve that gap? How do you bridge that gap? Now, there's several different solutions to bridge that gap. Uh, as an experimentalist, I think most likely is there's some unknown systematic error. A systematic error is a particularity, a peculiarity of your experiment that can only be resolved by doing another experiment. <laughs> You're basically doing an experiment on your experiment mm. to figure out what's, what caused you to make this error. So it could be an experiment um, that tests the instrument itself, a type of calibration, or it could be that we have to look to the galaxy and understand how the galaxy has to be modeled or our universe, how the universe has to be modeled. But nevertheless, we wanna reconcile, bridge that gap or understand that it's a measurement artifact. Mm. What's more, that would be exciting to me as a nerdy <laughs> experimentalist, but as a theorist, they would like to understand what caused the early universe to behave differently than the late universe. That's a very different question. Mm. Um, and there are many different uh, proposals. One is that there's a form of dark energy which doesn't stay constant. It's not the cosmological constant that Einstein so vehemently <laughs> inserted, then called his greatest blunder. <laughs> then we found out his blunder was calling it a blunder. <laughs> so, uh, so that could be the case. Dark energy could dissolve in a certain sense. It could go away. It could dissipate. There's so that's supposed to be the energy of, of, of the vacuum that exists no matter what. And so it's hard to see how that would it could change. Have, it could evolve. There are, there are models there in are which models. it's called uh, evolutionary dark matter, chameleon dark energy, rather, evolving dark energy, uh, something called quintessence, which is another form well, of evolving. Th th these are names that, that, that don't mean anything. They're just names to describe what you hope it'll be. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they're, but they, they, they do come into play because at some level you have to reconcile the expansion that we see today mm. with the early expansion of the universe, yeah, right. whether inflation occurred or not. Mm. We need to understand what is the linkage? Was there some sort of field like a scalar field, like a dark energy mm -hmm. field that was evolving over time? Or is it a true constant? Mm. And we believe the evidence that we have from our experimental uh, you know, colleagues around the world working on this problem suggests that it is a constant, but we'll know much more as new technologies come along, new satellites get launched to measure these effects and our cosmic microwave background well, experiments come online. The, the alternative is that it was a, a, a field that, that was trans, is transitory because the inflation field was transitory over 10 to the minus 36 or nine. That's right. Very, very short That's time, right. but there could be other fields that, that, are, that are changing over much longer periods of That's time. That's right, and so we only know of one scalar field in all of physics right now, and it's the Higgs field. Mm -hmm. Higgs field is a scalar field, it's elementary, it's not composite, right. and we can also make models that connect both the inflaton to the Higgs and also the dark energy and its evolving character perhaps to the Higgs. So these are wow. theoretical uh, undergoings uh, that are very uh, hot right now. Can you have 
one field to rule them all. Just one field that we know about, which is what would be nice to have as an experimentalist, just something that's known physics rather than unknown physics. Look, we don't know anything about dark energy. Mm -hmm. It's one of the greatest mysteries. That is one of the crises in cosmology. Sure. We don't know what dark matter is. We don't know what dark <laughs> energy is. We keep pushing down the limits on uh, what we know about particle dark matter. It, it, it doesn't seem particularly <laughs> likely right now we're gonna make any detections until we hit a fundamental level, a floor, called the supernova background, uh, well, it would be almost impossible to make any more progress. Dark energy, how do you make something in the lab that has 120 orders of magnitude less energy <laughs> than you'd predict from quantum mechanics? Yeah. So it's incredibly exciting, but it's also frightening. And I think that combination in Chinese must mean crisis. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get down to that level, though, if you get down to the level where you cannot determine, um, you cannot go any further uh, does that rule it out? It doesn't? No, no, no not, not at all. And the same thing could happen with inflation. Inflation may be true, and we may never have the sensitivity to detect it. It may be that inflation actually occurred, and there is an honest-to-goodness primordial gravitational wave background that exists, but that our telescopes and technology are incapable of detecting because we lack, will forever lack the sensitivity to measure something at this level of energy scale of inflation.